What's up, my freaky fear family? It's me, Fear the Great White. Finally back again with another creepypasta for you. Tonight's story is called There's Something Wrong with the Local Coyotes. Written by Casey Ware Alien on Reddit. Hope you guys like it. If so, don't forget to hit the like button. Anyway, this is there's something wrong with the local coyotes. Enjoy. I hope I'm wrong, but something seems seriously wrong with the local coyotes. I couldn't sleep the other night, so I decided to go on a late night drive. For context, I live in a very rural western state, and it's not uncommon for towns to be hours apart from each other. I decided to head towards the abandoned nuclear site that's about two hours out of my town. It is a nice quiet drive and you can drive out into the hills and see the stars in a way that isn't possible, even in a small town. The drive started normally enough. It was calm and quiet, pretty much exactly what I wanted to calm my mind and tire me out. About 30 miles out of town, my radio started making strange noises. I had kept the volume low just because I was enjoying the quiet, but suddenly a roar of static and voices filled my cab. Now, I drive an older truck, so things randomly going haywire isn't totally unusual, but I've never really heard of a radio suddenly gaining a life of its own and screaming to the world. The sudden blast of noise scared me, causing me to jerk the steering wheel. As I slid to the side of the road, I caught something out of the corner of my eye. There was a large figure off to the left-hand side of my truck. As my truck got closer, everything seemed to go in slow motion. The monstrous figure arched its back, letting out a scream unlike anything I had ever heard before. Its legs were almost stilt-like thin and tall, while gangly arms swung like pendulums as it bellowed again. What I assumed were its eyes flashed a piercing white as it craned its head towards me. I gripped the steering wheel even tighter as my truck veered into the barrel pit I had failed to see earlier in the dark. As if my luck couldn't get any worse. As I closed my eyes, I realized that the monster before me had been standing in the pit. I closed my eyes and waited for the crunching of my truck's grill as its shadow loomed over me. I sat there bracing for the sound of crunching metal to echo through the empty roadway, but it never came. Once the gravel quieted under my wheels, I opened my eyes. The ditch before me laid empty. There was no sign of the monstrosity I had seen just a few moments before. The truck was still running, and everything seemed fine. I had just started to relax and question my sanity when pained yipping slowly sounded from underneath my truck. I gathered what shaking resolve I had left, along with the tire iron, and slowly got out of my truck. Using my phone as a flashlight, I carefully looked under my truck. Two white orbs peered back at me as I moved the light under the cab. I dropped my phone and jumped back as the pain cries intensified. I stood there with my tire iron raised, waiting for whatever monster it was to crawl out and attack me. I stood there for what seemed like ages as the cries slowly quieted down. As I was grabbing my phone, I heard a small and very weak cough coming from under my truck. Feeling brave, I once again decided to look under the truck, and to my surprise, staring back at me, was a small coyote pup. His eyes glimmered white as he turned to look at my light. My heart sank as I saw him cough weakly and try to stand, but to no avail. I don't know what came over me, but impulsively I climbed in the cab of my truck and grabbed an old t-shirt from the floorboards. Without hesitation, I found myself crawling under the truck and through the sagebrush and gravel 
to save a tiny coyote who just minutes earlier managed to scare the ever-living shit out of me. The tiny creature stared at me, half terrified as I reached for him. He let out one last ear-piercing shriek as I set the shirt on him and pulled him out. He was alert, but his body felt limp in my arms. Terrified that I had broken his back, I quickly searched the nearest wildlife vet on my phone. I set the coyote on the floor of the cab as I looked at the options. There was a vet about two hours away that specialized in wildlife care, but with a little more scrolling I realized there was a vet even closer. The search said it would be four hours away taking the main roads, but having grown up in this area I knew there was a shortcut through the old nuclear site. The roads had long been abandoned, but they were drivable, especially in an old four-wheel drive. I looked down at the coyote as I climbed back into the driver's seat, and for a split second, I wondered if this really was what I saw on the road. As another weak cough escaped his lips, I threw the truck in drive without a second thought. As the truck climbed out of the barrel pit, I noticed hundreds of wide eyes watching us. Every time the truck moved and the light of the headlights shifted, it was as though new eyes just appeared. I've never known coyotes to be true pack animals, but I guess caring for wounded is a cross-species experience. My engine roared as we neared the site, and my new furry friend lay quiet as I scanned the roadside for the dirt trail that would lead us to our destination. The wind echoed through the abandoned buildings on either side of us as we sped through. Every now and then, in the window, I would catch the reflection of what looked like to be a set of glowing eyes, but I reassured myself that it was just my headlights. I could see the turnoff getting closer and we nearly missed it as the bellowing screech echoed off the crumbling buildings. I hit the gas as I glanced in the rearview mirror. Behind us stood another one of the grotesque creatures I'd seen earlier. A spindly arm reached out and grabbed the tailgate of the truck, ripping it off one of its hinges. I took the turn far too fast in the tiny coyote and I went bumbling through the brush and rocks off the trail. Fearing the creature was still behind us, I did my best to correct our course and get us back to the dirt road, but in the chaos, I managed to lose all sense of direction. I could see the outline of the buildings behind us and the open range in front of us. The nuclear site was huge, and without getting closer, there was no way to tell where we actually were. No longer seeing any sign of the monster, I decided to stop the truck and get my bearings. If we tried to backtrack, we could have ended up right back in the creature's clutches. If we continued forward, we had the option of being lost in the desert and probably dying out there. I tried to decide what to do when I heard a strange popping come from the passenger side of the truck. I flinched as I realized how hard the ride had been on the coyote. There's no way that off-roading was any sort of comfortable for him in the shape he was in. The strange popping noise happened again and I looked down at my new friend. I was horrified as I watched his tiny body writhe and pop. The joints that were once limp seemed to snap into place and it looked as though they were elongating as I stared in abject horror. I didn't have any time to process what was happening because demonic howls and wide eyes seemed to surround the truck. Without a second thought, I threw the truck into gear and barreled deeper into the desert, driving in no particular direction other than away. I noticed fur suddenly filling my passenger seat. A deep grumbling whine filled the cab. By the time I looked back up, a boulder had filled the once empty space in front of the truck. I turned the wheel as hard as I could, somehow managing to avoid colliding head on with the boulder, but still managing to lose my driver's side mirror in the process. Knowing we were heading right back into the thick of the creatures, I slammed down on the gas. If they were going to get me, 
I wasn't going down without a fight. Slamming through sagebrush and rocks, I was shocked by the vast emptiness. There wasn't a single monster in sight. Instinctively, I drove in the direction I expected the road to be. The desert seemed silent, but for the hammering of my engine. By the time my tires hit the ruts of the dirt road, I had almost forgotten about the coyote riding with me. As I got back on the path, I slowed down to check on it. Not only had I hit a coyote, I just put him through a whirlwind of a truck ride that may or may not have been caused by a wild hallucination on my part. I pulled the truck to a stop as I saw the familiar and decrepit buildings alongside the roadside and looked down to it. When I did, I was shocked by what was on my floorboards. Fur everywhere and long limbs bent at unnatural angles. As my gaze wandered up, the radio roared to life once again, scaring me so badly I hit the gas almost instinctively. Without realizing what I had done, I looked up and saw two wild, wide eyes staring and a large maw filled with saber-like teeth right in my face. As I screamed, it let out a hellish howl, loud enough to crack my windshield. I jerked the wheel and we managed to collide with a large cement building. My face slammed into the steering wheel as we crashed through the cement outer walls of the building. I could hear the creature's screeches as the truck continued on its course, finally ending its journey when we slammed into a large metal box. I started drifting in and out of consciousness. The sound of the engine hummed on as I watched more of the monsters tearing the pasture door off. They howled as they drugged their companion out of the truck. When I awoke next, I was in a hospital room. There were police and doctors standing around me, covered in lead panels and protective equipment. It was then that I learned at least part of the truth surrounding the site. The locals had always been told that the site was abandoned because of lack of funding. According to the officer who was questioning me, that wasn't at all true. Then that nuclear site was the site of one of America's first nuclear meltdowns. It's only true nuclear disaster. I guess back in the 60s they were doing experiments with breeder reactors. Someone made a mistake and the control rod was pulled too far out throwing the reactor into a full meltdown. Several people were killed, but given the nature of the experiment, the government quickly jumped in and started a cover-up. Their actions would later inspire how the Soviets addressed the Chernobyl meltdown. The reactor was quickly encased in a lead coffin and had a nondescript concrete building erected around it. The rest of the site was quickly abandoned but was still monitored, which is, I guess, how they found me. No one can explain the coyote monsters I met with. The cops keep accusing me of trespassing in the buildings. They say I have radiation poisoning and that caused wild hallucinations, but I know I didn't have contact with any of the buildings until I was faced with that creature in my truck. I managed to damage the lead coffin, exposing myself to radiation levels our hospital has never seen before. I'm so very tired, but I felt like I had to write this down. It wouldn't shock me if this post disappears after I die, or the government decides to cover it up. But I couldn't leave what happened to me unsaid. Don't trust coyotes, and never go near anything the government has abandoned. That was, There's Something Wrong with the Local Coyotes, written by Casey Ware Alien on Reddit. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And click that sub button. And click the little bell so you get notified when new videos come out. As always, I'm Fear the Great White. You're fucking awesome. I love you all. I'm out. Bye.